let's talk about timers. Uh, there are four timers on the, uh, the pick that we're going to be using. Uh, that are just called timer 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, the sizes here kind of represent how powerful the timer is. Uh, so what is a timer? I've said the word. Uh, all a timer is, it is simply a special function register or a combination of two special function registers that auto increments. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of the whole thing, right? Um, so essentially, um, one of the timers we'll be working with, the, the main one, is going to be 16 bits, so it's actually two special function registers, and all it does is once you say go, it will just auto increment, right? So if a certain amount of time passes uh, for one timer tick, um, it'll go from zero to one. Uh, that of course continues all the way up until it gets nearly full, so if a bunch of time passes, it'll get up to uh, this value right here, which is 65,535. So it's like completely full of ones. So, you know, a bunch of time passed between those two. And then as soon as it's full, the next time it ticks, it just resets to zero and the whole thing begins again, right? So that's all a timer is. It's just an auto incrementing special function register and you can set up like how fast it, it ticks away. These special function registers, if you, if you cared where they're at, uh, there's two for timer zero because it's 16-bit, uh, two for timer one because it's 16-bit, uh, there's only one for timer two because it's an 8-bit clock, uh, and then two for timer three because it's a 16-bit clock. Um, and those are listed on the side. The one we're going to use the most, by the way, is timer zero. It's kind of our primary one. It's got the most features. Later in the quarter, you'll use timer two some because you have to use it with a thing called PWM, which we'll learn about later. The only reason to use timer one is if you need a second timer, and then the only use, reason to use timer three is if you need three timers. To be honest, nobody ever used timer three. Um, sometimes people use timer one, but it's not even that common. Usually zero is the only one you need, and then timer two for PWM. In order to use the timer, we typically use library functions. Library functions just make our life easier. They set the special function registers for you, um, and they use code that's a little bit more human readable. There are four library functions uh, that we're going to be using, uh, but really we don't ever care about closing the timer, that top one. Um, once we open a timer, we're going to use it for the, for the entire program of the pick, so you don't ever really need to close it. So we only actually care about three. Uh, so there's open timer, which that probably makes sense. That's how you set it up, how you decide like how fast it's going to tick. Um, and then there's read timer, where you just see what the value is. Uh, and there's write timer, to where you set the timer to a specific value. So those three functions are kind of it, right? So what I want to do is I want to do an example code. Uh, so go ahead and get your, uh, get your board ready. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, example program on there. Uh, that just exercises those three functions. So go ahead and fire up uh, MPLAB. And I'm going to you know, do this quick because we've done this many times. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new project. Uh, I'm going to give it the typical stuff, the PIC 18F 4520. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, the PIC Kit 3 as what it should be using, uh, the compiler that we use, and I'm just going to call it timer on LCD. And then since it's on the LCD, we're going to need lcd.c, uh, since we're going to be using that helper module. We don't change the name on it, we just leave it the same. We're going to also need uh, lcd.h, so don't change the name on that one either, just leave it as LCD module. No, no new, remove the word new. And then the code that we're going to use is we're going to start from template. Um, and I'm going to choose to call mine timer on LCD. I did that fast, but that's just because the power of videos, you can pause uh, as you see fit. Uh, so once we've got uh, our timer on LCD, I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit more room for my code here. Uh, since we're using uh, the LCD, we better include it. So we'll say include LCD module .h. I happen to know that I don't care about the ADC module, so I'm actually going to take that one off. 
Uh, and let's do some of the boilerplate code just to kind of get ourselves started. Uh, I said I wasn't using the ADC module, so I suppose I better put in the adcon1 equals 0x0f. Zero zero uh, and then, to be honest, for this demo, we're not even using any of the LEDs. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could just blow them all away. Uh, no big deal there. And what we really want to do is we just want to initialize the LCD and just kind of, when we start, let's just make sure we can write something to it just to make sure everything's fine. Um, so the LCD commands, one way you can do them is you can type, you know, like XLCD um, and you can hit control space um, and it will attempt to help you autocomplete. So init is the first one we need. Uh, XLCD control space clear is the next one we need. And then to be honest, what I really want to do is I just want to print something to the screen, right? So XLCD um, line one home, oops, forgot my semicolon. And you can see it's fairly easy to get those commands on the screen. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be printing uh, the timer to the LCD. So that's XLCD, uh, I believe it's put RAM string. I'm just going to type a little bit, then hit control space. Yep, looks good. Um, and I'm going to make a character array called line one. Again, going quite quick, but that's because you can pause. Um, so all I've done here is I've um, started to set up printing to the LCD. Um, I'm going to load something into line one. It's going to be timer uh, equals, or I used an arrow. Um, typically we would say percent %d. And then just as a test, I'm going to pr print just 50, kind of as my test here. Typically, we would say percent %d because that says print it as a decimal. Um, the only thing that I'm going to change is instead of printing it as a decimal, I want to print it as an unsigned integer. So I say percent %u, um, and that will make sure it's never negative. So it's, it's a way to print something like an unsigned int. And I'm going to do one more bit of fanciness. I'm going to say um, in between the percent and the u, I'm going to add the number 5. What that does is it forces it to take up 5 spaces. And the reason I want to do that is because when you print like 10, I don't want to print it to the left. I want to print it to like where the ones digit won't move. Um, and this 5 is a special thing you can do with formatted print strings to force it to take 5 characters. Uh, so the only thing I'm missing is I need to declare uh, line 1. So line one needs to be a character array. Um, it needs to be at least 17 big. Uh, I'm going to do what I've done in the past and just make it 20. So I've got a little buffer in case I write, write too much. Uh, so at this point, it should be capable of printing something to the LCD. Um, so if you hit build and run, uh, what should pop up? Well, it's going to take a little bit. Oh, I hate that message. Should have seen that one coming. So it's going to hopefully print timer one, uh, dash, dash, arrow, um, and then my number 50. Uh, so if your eyes are extremely good, you can see that it's doing that. All right, so that's all well and good. Uh, but what I really want to do is I want to print the timer value. Um, and I'm going to drop it into my while loop as well. So I dropped it into my while loop. I hit... Um, Alt Shift F and it should format it for me. And now what I want to do is instead of printing 50, what I want to do is I want to use a timers command uh, called read timer. If we're going to be using timers, we better include it. And I would like for you to actually follow along and do these things, not just watch me do them. And I'm going to say uh, read timer and then I'm gonna hit control space because I'm sure that's enough. Um, it looks like I can read a bunch of timers. I'm gonna choose to read timer zero. Uh, that's what we use for this example. So now I'm gonna read timer zero. The other thing I better do is I better set up this timer. So I've kind of skipped over this but I'm gonna come back and do it now. Um, in order to open the timer so there's a command called open timer zero, um, and it takes a single parameter, uh, which is kind of neat. It just takes one parameter. In order to figure out how to set this parameter, 
you're gonna need to uh, to look at the the PDF that goes along with it, right? So, so we want to learn more about how do we do this uh, open timer uh, function. The open timer function, I've got it here. It has a bunch of uh, configuration settings, and essentially you can choose between in each category you can choose an option that you like. So in the first category you can say I want timer interrupts on or I want timer interrupts off. Um, the second category you can say whether you want 8-bit or 16-bit mode. Um, an internal or external clock source. I'm going to tell you now we always want internal. External is like a push button out here. You do not want that. And then the final thing is the prescaler value. So you can see that there's a lot of prescaler values. This sets how fast it ticks. Um, so you know like how from the, the clock to the instruction cycle frequency there's always a 4 to 1 ratio. Um, well from the instruction cycle frequency to the timer um, there's also a ratio and that's what's set with this prescaler here. So that's how we're going to set the different things. Personally what I like to do is I like to just open up the PDF directly um, and I like to just copy things out um, if, if possible, right? Uh, so timers are in section 2.9 this is the library PDF that I've downloaded before. If you haven't downloaded it before, it's up on Courseware. Um, if you open it up in Chrome, though, you won't get this table of contents. Um, but at any rate, the timer functions start on, it looks like, page 64 or so. Um, and what I could do is I can, if I would like, um, actually copy these things um, out of the PDF. You know, or you can type them if you trust yourself. Uh, so let's go ahead and zoom in just a, a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and zoom to 100% here. So what I want is I want to do interrupts off, 16-bit, clock source internal. So I'll go ahead and I'll just type some of those. All right, so there I've added uh, those three. So t interrupts off, 16-bit, uh, clock source internal. Um, the middle two or the last two there will never change. Uh, the last thing I need to do is I need to set my prescaler. Um, and so I want a T0 underscore PS 1 to, I'm going to pick the bottom one, 1 to 250. Alright, uh, and so just like that I've got my timer ready to go. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to run it uh, and see if I can see the value changing on the LCD screen. So all we're doing right now is we're just um, practicing with the library functions. Um, at this point you should know how to do open um, and then you should know how to do read. What I like to do best is I like to actually just cover up uh, the bottom three digits and then you can watch the, uh, the thousands actually counting. What it should do is it should count up to 65,000 and then roll over uh, back to zero. Technically it counted to 65,535 and then it rolled over to zero. So that's actually most of the library functions. The only one we didn't use is write timer. Um, so we'll just add a little if statement in here. So we'll say if uh, read timer zero is greater than, I don't know, let's say if it's greater than 50,000, then what we're going to do is we're going to write timer zero back to, I don't know, pick a number 20,000. And so if we do this, what will happen is as soon as it gets up to 50,000, it will reset to 20,000. And obviously, we're just doing this for example purposes, right? I wanted some way to do a right timer, um, and I thought that limiting its range from uh, 20 to 50 would be appropriate. So the first time it runs, it starts at zero, and it's going to count all the way up to 50,000, and then it reset to 20,000. So that's kind of all I really wanted to do, um, is I just wanted to go ahead and point out um, how those different library functions work. The other thing I will say just, just briefly is all these library functions are doing is they're dealing with the special function registers. Um, so if I was to set a breakpoint on this line, actually I'll set a breakpoint on the line before just, just to make sure it stops before it gets there. And if I wanted to, I could actually watch in the, uh, the variables window Um, I could actually watch these variables. So if I go ahead and run it and I let it hit my breakpoint before timer zero, what I want to do is I want to see 
what timer, open timer zero does in terms of special function registers. Um, and so what I can do is, uh, so I hit there, I can actually click on this create a new watch, special function registers, um, and the thing that it sets is T0 con, so timer zero configuration. And so this timer zero configuration, uh, if you look at it, um, tell it I'm going to show the decimal version, or binary version, not decimal. It'll tell you how things are set. Um, so you can see that it defaulted to all ones, uh, which is fine. Uh, but if I hit uh, step over, so now I'm on this open timer one. If I hit step over here, um, all it's doing is it's just setting up uh, T0 con. Um, and if you were to go into the data sheet and you were to actually read these things, like this one says, is it 8 bit? It's set to 0 for false. Um, is the oscillator external? It's 0 for false. It's using the internal. Um, and then this one sets what the prescaler is for timer 0. It's actually, it all makes a lot of sense. Um, and if you cared to look into it, you could see here's that T0 con special function register. Here are the different ways you can set timer 0. And all that library function does is it's just setting this special function register for you. So you actually could do um, this line of code here, so this open timer zero. You actually could do that dealing with special function registers directly. Same with read timer and write timer. Um, I won't go into it in the example, but I will say that all that that open timer zero function did is it set T0 con. So it was just one special function register. Turns out it set it to 0x97. Um, and the deal is this version with the library function is just a lot more readable than the shorthand version, but they do the same thing. Likewise, if you wanted, you could manually read the time. Um, so it's two special function registers kind of like merged together. So instead of read timer, you could actually just manually look at the special function registers. And likewise, instead of write timer, um, you could just write 20,000 to it um, if you broke down what the two chunks were in hex. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say about that is library functions are much more readable, and that's why we like to use them. But you don't actually have to if you didn't want to. All right, so that's been your crash course into working with timers and the three primary functions you're going to use. All right, see you next time.